Hello, everybody. Welcome to Toy Chantal, round 10 of the FIM Motocross World Championship. And uh, on our studio show this weekend, we've got Paul's Jonas, Adam Wheeler. We've got Todd Waters coming in and also rider, team manager, David Philipparts. But um, before we start, though, uh, Adam, round 10 already. It's uh, flying by. Absolutely. Second Grand Prix in a week, Paul, after Italy last week. So it's um, it's cold and wet again. So uh, <laughs> you know, say, it's just being the middle of summer. What's going on? I know. Uh, muddy, muddy GPs, they're like buses. You wait nine rounds for one and then suddenly two turn up at once. So uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But before we start talking to Paul Jonas here from Red Bull KTM Factory Racing, the MX2 rider, let's uh, take a quick look what happened in the mud of Majora one week ago. Jordy Tixier tried to go too early as the gate dropped and he would pay the price as well because he was buried in the mid-pack as he entered turn one. He got ripped off his bike. Alongside him was the number 92 of Valentin Guillaume. And there was carnage once again at turn one as Jeffrey Hurlings this time did take the foxhole shot. Behind him was the number six of Benoit Pacharel. Paul Jonas was in there as well, but he made a mistake at the top of the hill. Geiser and Patrell both finding their way through. Geiser getting himself into second with that pass on the number six. Moment of madness from out of nowhere. Tonkov, who was in a position to win the Grand Prix, launched himself up the inside of Paul's Jonas. Both of them went crashing out. As Max Anstey then found himself in the thick of it at the sharp end of the field. Making a move on Pacharel to get himself into fourth. He then went after Jeremy Siwa on the Rockstar Energy Suzuki, number 91. They battled over third, but it would be the Swiss rider that would eventually cross the line ahead of the Brit. Hurlings had a comfortable advantage until, on the final lap, he found himself running into back markers. Geiser closed the gap. So too did Siwa, Anstey and Pacharel. Hurlings under pressure on the final lap. But he needn't have bothered because Hurlings did what Hurlings does best. Crossed the line to take victory in race two, but it was Tim Geiser in second who actually won the overall Grand Prix. Jeremy Siwa was third. And the championship looks like this then. Jeffrey Hurlings extends his lead over Gio and Jonas. But this weekend, it was all about Tim Geiser taking his second career victory once more on the Garibaldi Honda. Well, that's it. Next time, we'll be in Germany. We hope you can join us then. Bye for now. So, some of the highlights from... Uh, we're in Germany. Round nine, <laughs> yeah. And already we're in Germany, so uh, round 10. And uh, Paul's Jonas, Red Bull KTM Factory Racing, joins us. Um, Paul's, welcome to our studio show. The first time for you on the studio show. Yeah, thank yeah. you. First time. Because normally uh, <laughs> Paul's obviously riding in European Championship and it's only reserved for the, the World Championship. Oh, right? no. I remember I was in Lerup. Lerup. Yeah. As a champion. Yeah. On that's the true. champion show. It looked super easy riding in those conditions last week. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> was pretty difficult. You know, I was so happy that it was raining, but in the end it turned out like my worst GP of the year. Mm -hmm. I made stupid crashes and, yeah, don't go take me out in the second race and, yeah, yeah some bad luck. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But um, at the moment, you are tied for second in the championship, but you are classified as third. Um, are you surprised by that at the moment in terms of you are actually inside the top three in the world championship in your first real full season? Yeah, I'm really, maybe now I'm not anymore so surprised. But uh, like when I started the season in first three races, two podiums, that was like, whoa, what's going on? But uh yeah, now, now I'm feeling really good with the bike and uh, yeah, team did a, is doing a really good job. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to do my best not to put pressure on my shoulders because, you know, it's, uh, it's not so easy to stay in the top three because the guys are really fast and uh, everyone wants to be there. So mm -hmm. yeah, I will do my best and try to keep that same position till the end of the championship. You did a couple of rounds last year. Nothing really, really spectacular. Maybe a fifth in one race in Lommel, but you must have had a really busy off-season, you know, and a really heavy training program. Who are you? Who are you working with? Are you still with Stefan? 
Yeah, yeah, I was working a uh, whole off season with <coughs> Stefan Everts with uh, riding and uh, really Linden with physical training. So uh, yeah, we did really, really good job. And uh, actually, we start already after the nations. We immediately start to practice. And uh, yeah, it was tough off season, but you know, hard work's paying off. You can see now on the paper. Mm. I imagine it's difficult enough to to get on a Grand Prix podium, but then it also must be even harder to to make that form consistent all through the season like Paul was saying we're on round 10 I mean it must be tricky to to keep that level up all the time is that the biggest challenge for you yeah yeah that's for sure the biggest challenge because you know to get on the podium for one time you can be lucky and uh yeah it can happen but to to stay there for a longer time that's really difficult I still need to work on that <laughs> well you have had two podiums already this year the first one in Thailand the second one in Argentina were you surprised to be on the podium so early and especially in Thailand with uh, the extreme uh, weather temperatures yeah for sure I was really surprised the, the goal was you know maybe make some uh, yeah <coughs> top tens that would be really good and uh, yeah turn out the top three in the first first races and uh, yeah the goal was maybe in the end of the season to get some podium. But, uh, yeah, it worked out good, you know. <laughs> and the second one coming here in Argentina. Great battle with Dylan Ferrandez, by the way. Yeah, first race I was, I don't know, I was so excited or what. But, uh, like, I was second and I felt, yeah, so good. I passed Dylan. I was like, yeah, what's going on? I'm so fast today. <laughs> and, yeah, second moto also was uh, was a good battle. Yeah, that, but the track was so nice. I just loved the track. Everybody said that, didn't they? Everybody. But um, obviously, we're looking at the first race here. All of this battle at the front yeah. was possible because of what happened on the first lap with you and Jeffrey. Um, yeah. You know, how bad did you feel? Yeah, I was, uh, you know, after that podium, that was not the same like in Thailand. I was not so happy, you know, <laughs> because, yeah, I take my teammate out. But, yeah, you know, bad things happen. You know, I didn't want to do it. But, yeah, this first lap and uh, I, maybe I was too aggressive. Mm -hmm. That that's what still I need to work on because I many times at the first laps I'm too aggressive and make uh, some bad decisions. I mean, Paul, you you mentioned it about the pressure of getting two podiums in the flyaway races and then coming back to Europe. Um, and Paul, I think it was one of your questions. You you know things have been a little bit up and down since then since you came back here. Was that a, a, you know a repercussion of getting those podiums of thinking, well, you know, I now need to be there every week. I need to be a top three guy. Yeah, no, I didn't want to put the pressure on myself, but, uh, you know, that you start to think that you can be there. Because I go to the first races, I said, yeah, I don't know where, I b where I'm at, you know. I just try to do my best. And, you know, the best was I'm on the podiums. And then after, yeah, that's a good feeling. I want to be there every week. But, uh, yeah, it's not so easy, and I'm starting to put the pressure on myself. But now I'm trying to calm down and <laughs> make it easier and easier on myself. <laughs> We just saw you there with uh, Dylan. You had another moment with him in, in the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, what did you make to that whole... I mean, did he actually kick you or was it just a, a, a gentle push to the side, you know, when you came past the pit with, lane with area? With a foot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he... Yeah. I even... I, I didn't block him, you know. I was just keeping my line, but he just put the leg out. I was like, what? What he's doing? And mm. then he kicked me a little bit, but, uh, yeah, you know, we are in motocross, not in some yeah, fighting, fighting <laughs> race, you know? <laughs> Um, and obviously last week, Italy, uh, the first mud race, a real mud race. Um, first race, y you struggled a little bit. The second one, you had a good start. And we saw from the clip, we have it again, actually, um, the incident with Alexander. Yeah. What were your thoughts on that as it was happening? Uh, from my position watching it, it looked like you had no idea it was coming because you just couldn't move out of the way. But as a rider in that situation, what was going through your mind? Oh, I, just, uh, I just heard someone coming... Uh wide open, he, he didn't shut off, you know, it was just full gas, I I didn't see him, just bomb, and we are down, I was like, yeah, that was <laughs> not the best move, but uh, yeah, I could do nothing, you know, bad things happen. I think we have a, a slow-mo of it as well, the replay, because I think maybe one or two different angles, because, <laughs> you I'm know. Sh I'm sure we would have learned some, some fruitful Latvian Ball. language there, wouldn't <laughs> we, pause that moment? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, but uh, yeah, you see, I had nowhere to go, because there was mud, so, mm. and I just land completely in the mud my bike was uh yeah covered in the mud the grips and everything oh i was so mad <laughs> <laughs> but we um before we selected that clip we we did actually go through the footage and it did look if you went frame by frame there was a slight pickup with the front wheel before he came into you okay 
you know, we've seen it. It's not changing anything, you know. And yeah. he has apologised, you know, for his incident. Maybe not to you directly, but on one of our pitch chats yesterday that we did with him. Um, because obviously from his side, it was expensive because it cost him the overall Grand Prix. So, you know, um, but I, yeah, like you say, just one of those uh, unfortunate incidents. Yeah, just still waiting for that apology though, aren't you? No, no, the next morning I get a text message. You write me, yeah, I'm really sorry. So okay, yeah. So That's it's all good. All yeah, 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 for sure. That Till it tomorrow. It happens. It happens. <laughs> Changing subject, Paul. One thing I want to know is everybody now is kind of waiting to see what Jeffrey will do next year, whether he's going to stay in MX2 again or move to MXGP. Yeah. If he moves and confirms it soon, then what will that mean for you? I mean, you could almost become like the leader for Red Bull KTM in MX2. Are you ready to do that? You know, are you ready to kind of step up? Because there's going to be title pressure, bam, straight away. Yeah, that will be really difficult for me. But yeah, if you make... One more off season like this, like we did, I think I can do it. But yeah, I need to work really hard and need to be for sure mentally ready because that's that's mm. tough. Yeah, because KTM have won the MX2 title every year since 2008. Yeah. So mm. I mean, need to keep that level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, two more questions. One of them on Twitter, coming from uh, Colin Dory. Um, obviously, we talked about the the Dylan incident from with the leg, and obviously we just saw. Uh, the Tonkov moment yep. from last week. He wants to know which move did you feel was the worst one, Dylan's or Alexander's? Yeah, for sure Alexander's because you know I uh, I lose many many points on that. With Dylan, I just yeah he passed me and uh, that was all. You know he touched me, that was not nice move. But with Alexander, I lose many points. Mm. You know that uh, when you look now in the overall standings that. Those few points cost a lot. Yeah, you would be now second, yeah. not tied on points with Valentin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, and finally, before we let you go, um, at the start of the season, what was your goal in terms of where you wanted to finish in the World Championship? And has that changed now because you are inside the top three? And first, first of all, the the like to the half or middle, I wanted to be just a consistent top ten rider, you know. And then maybe in the end of the season to move up on top top eight, top five. But uh, yeah, you know, now I'm third in the championship standings and. Uh, yeah, I don't try to put the goal to to stay there, but that will for sure be really nice to be to be there in the end of the season. A top ten rider, really. Yeah, yeah that was the goal to met in the start of the season to be consistent top ten every every race. I think you might have been a bit off with your <laughs> your, your judgment. <laughs> no, there, but Paul. then you look at the results that he was getting, you know, towards the end of the year. There's only that one standout yeah. performance in Lommel last year where it was top five. But other than that it was eighth, ninth, eleventh, thirteenth, whatever and yeah, so if I get top ten that was wow. Yeah, last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, Paul Jonas, thanks for joining us in our studio show this yeah. weekend. All the best for tomorrow and the rest of the season. Yeah. Thank and you. Uh, who knows, maybe you'll stay inside that top three and uh, somewhere in and around there, you know. <laughs> I hope. I yeah. hope. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Paul Jonas, ladies and gentlemen, um, right, before we welcome our next guest, let's take a look at some of the, uh, take a look at some of the highlights from Major in MXGP. Man, what a dramatic weekend it was in that class. Roman Fevre was on fire once again. Slightly drier racetrack for the riders in race two. Max Nagel determined to make up for his loss of points in race number one as Van Horvitz Yamaha found itself stuck into the rear wheel of the Honda of Evgeny Bobrashev. Nagel it was who led. Strybos was second as Lupino crashed out to the top of the hill, taking a couple of riders with him in the process. Strybos, though, back from injury, was in second. All out. Put himself up into third early on as Roman Fevre was lucky to get away from this one. Crashed out spectacularly. His Yamaha was damaged. Pretty much no handlebars, no front brake. The Frenchman carved his way through the field in pursuit of points and a possible overall Grand Prix victory as Philippots lost fourth place to Todd Waters and then came under attack from Sean Simpson. Kai Rowley struggling to hang on to his 450 KTM around this Majora circuit, riding around just to pick up as many points as possible. He would eventually come home in 18. As the race went on, though, Philip Arts, who was in a Grand Prix winning position, suddenly got passed by Sean Simpson. And then later on, Roman Fevre. That got him down into second place in the overall Grand Prix classification. But on the final lap, Kevin Strybos made this pass on Max Nagel. 
not only to take the lead, but to go on and win the race and deny Philip Hartz the overall Grand Prix win. Max Nagel was disappointed not to have won the race, and it was Fevre who won the overall Grand Prix from Strybos and Todd Waters, the Australian, taking his first ever podium in MXGP. But what about Roman Fevre? Back-to-back -back wins now, winning in France two weeks ago, and now here in Italy, and he moves to third in the MXGP Championship. <laughs> I'm joined now by Todd Waters, and uh, Todd Waters, Red Bull Ice One, Husqvarna Factory Racing. First time studio guest, definitely, not like Jonas, who was here as a European Championship winner uh, back in Lerop uh, a few years ago. But um, first time guest, um, you have to do a little initiation ceremony. You have to give us like 10 minutes of a, a famous Australian song, if you can. 10 minutes of an Australian 10 song? Seconds. 10 <laughs> <Yeah>. seconds, 10 seconds. <laughs> Come on, songs don't go that long, but uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, all right. I come from a land down under. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a Vegemite sandwich. <laughs> we can see why he's a motocross rider, but we're yeah. only joking by that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but come on, I, you Mate, know, if we had some, effort. a bit of uh, drum action in the background, some some beats, you know. We could do something with that. It was a good effort. <laughs> we just had to settle you in, you know, first timer and all the rest of it. But yeah. um, well, good day, first time studio guest. Um, last year. Should have been your first full season. Obviously cut short through injury. Uh, everything okay now? You're 100%. There were no complications in the off season or anything like that. No, I mean, look, the off season was really good. I uh, started off doing some testing with the team, and uh, then we headed to Red Bull and and done some testing off the bike with uh, the body, and and then we shot off back to Australia. Got a bike and just went riding in the sand dunes and had just a a heap of fun and just put some hours on the bike. So that was a big starting point for me because I missed so much racing and. And I had no base, so I just needed to ride the bike. And, and then I flew over here New Year's, and it was just full gas from then. I mean, it's like I, uh, after your podium last week in Italy, I counted up, and you've only done 14 Grand Prix. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, for the second year, that, that's hardly anything, you know. I mean, it shows how much you're still kind of growing and learning here. Yeah, it's, it's kind of disappointing in that respect that I missed last year, because that was my rookie year, but I yeah. didn't get a good shot at it. I got four GPs. We were sitting seventh in the championship. And uh, I, I was learning, you know, it was all new to me. Uh, the, just the workload was unbelievable for me. Coming from Australia where we got one day formats, racing two days was just, you know, it was taking me two, three days to get over it. Well, uh, we had a, uh, qu a question on Twitter from a guy called Andy McKinstry who did say, how tough was it for you coming to Europe from Australia? Mate, it's, uh, for one, you don't just say, I'm going to race a GP and uh, hop in my car and go, and go race one. Yeah. I got to come from the other side of the world and and uh, get on a good team and and it's taken me this long. That's sort of something that I look back on now and say, man, when I was 17, 18, I should have just got a loan and just got myself over here. I just wish that I got here and raced some MX2, got some experience. But that's in the past and and we're here now. So we've uh, we've got 14 GPs under our belt. We've struck a podium, which is I'm still smiling from it. Yeah. So it's man, I. We'll talk about that in a moment, actually, because yeah. we've got the you know clips and everything else. But in terms of now, let's fast forward. How would you evaluate your season so far? Are you about where you expected to be or were you expecting more? Because up until last week, you were kind of eighth, ninth in that respect. So, Yeah, look, I was in the, in the pocket where I started getting good starts and seeing these front guys, Bob Rashef, Paul Arn, all these guys, and, and Max, and I just they just got me that bit, and I was getting so frustrated. You know, no one likes to be pulled away from, and... And uh, so I had a lot of motivation to, to train hard. And, but that's a thing that I struggle with in the GPs because they're one after another. It's hard to just go, OK, I'm going to take three weeks. I'm going to put in and come out firing. So that's a tricky part. I'm learning all this kind of stuff along the way. And, and, uh, but yes, to say we're sitting eighth in the championship and, um, and the team and myself, we're all working well together. We got, I got a good group of people around me and uh, I think we can keep moving forward. It just seems to be one of the areas where you were struggling a little bit, like the first couple of laps, just like getting that pace to go straight away with those guys. I mean, that seemed one thing you were trying to learn and, and develop. You know, that was one thing yeah. we didn't see you so strong at. The, it sounds kind of stupid, but uh, in Australia, we've raced at a, at a high level. So um, we've always had, uh, you know, we'd get a bad start and come through. And not too often you'd have three, four guys trying to pass you. So it was always you'd be making the passes and, and finish, okay, I could only get third, but I've got a bad start. But 
coming over here, I get a good start. Next minute, one guy, two guy, three. And you start defending your lines and riding slower because you're trying to, you see a mudguard, so you ride over there. Mm. You lose a second on the guy in front of you and you're just defending. That's what I got a, last weekend was the first time that I went, righto, it's muddy. It's kind of one line. I'm just going to take some lines. Guys, Crowley was on the inside and we made a pass around. That is how I need to be riding on the normal GP tracks. By far, your biggest weekend was last weekend. Two fourth place finishes. Tell us about it. First race and then second race. Yeah, well, the first race, uh, we got off to not a bad start and uh, just started picking through and got, yeah, finished fourth. I was, uh, could see Van Horbrick and, and I just felt really well, felt really comfortable in the mud. So, which is a strange thing for me because I come from Australia where it's kind of drier and the, it rains so much over here. The guys are mud riders. So... I'm kind of stoked to be not a bad mud rider over in this level. And obviously this was uh, that first race, wasn't it? And obviously the second one was a little bit more epic because either you or David or Fevra, uh, maybe even Strybos was in there at one point, you know, had a shout at winning the overall Grand Prix. So you've gone from getting your first fourth place finish, your best in your career, to almost winning the GP. Yeah, that's uh, lucky they didn't tell me that on the pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, yeah, in the second race, we got off to a good start and I was in third place and, and made a, I dropped it and I just... Oh, it took me a bit to get going after that because I was kind of, it rattled me a little bit. And then I, uh, the guys put out podium on the pit board and, man, I, it's a feeling that I can't describe. To see that, that there's a chance on the podium, it just, you can't think of nothing. Have you, you watched it back it. yet? Uh, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like for you standing on that podium? Hard work gone into that, you know, was uh, a lot of emotions... In terms of, you know, the, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the, the pain, was it all worth it? Yes, for sure. The, it's a hard feeling to describe for me because like my girlfriend Gillian said, she said, man, it's so awesome because you've dreamt of this. Mm. I said, man, you know, it's one thing to dream something like that, like I'm going to race the Olymp like win an Olympic championship. For me, the dream was to go to Europe, race the GPs and one day win it, you know, to be Australia's first ever person to win a um, premier class GP but you know three years ago I was sitting in Australia thinking how can I get there yeah. how am I going to even get there and I got the chance to race Des Nations and it opened my eyes up so the dreams have always been to just to get to Europe and like I remember saying to dad reading Andrew McFarlane in, in, in the ADB magazine at home and uh, they had a write up of him travelling around the camper van I said, I remember to this day, Dad and I just go, imagine that, like mm. getting paid to race your bike, travel around Europe in a camper van. And my parents are over here and we're doing it now. So, mm. well, Ryan G asks, um, in the past, lots of Australians have moved to the US to race. What attracted you to MXGP instead? And would you have or have you ever considered a move stateside? Uh, America, it's completely different. So I'm from... The Atherton Tablelands, right up north, we go camping. We're kind of a bit more redneck, you know. <laughs> My granddad owns a big farm, and uh, and we go fishing and this kind of stuff. So hang out with the boys, and so that's what I'm like. I like to when we go to the nationals in Australia. A lot of the time, I camp. I take my van, just camp with a swag, and that's what I love to do. So Europe to me, coming over here, it's raining and it's tough, and and uh, you got your camper van and you're just traveling around Europe. Man, I can't think of anything better. You know, America's side of things is the supercross and the motocross is you fly in, fly out, you go on and go on to these signings and it's just full gas, man. Mm. And this over here is cool. Um, Todd, one of the things we've seen over recent years, you know, with the Kiwis like Ben Townley, Josh Coppins, even with Dean Ferris coming over, Chad Reed, you know, far before was the last Aussie to win a 250cc GP 2001. Um my point being is that it's a long way for you to come over and compete. You know, does that mean that there's more intensity, a little bit more anguish to, to, to get, you know, anxiety to get those results to, to, you know, to ensure a contract for next year? Because it's not like you can down tools and think, well, OK, well, where do I go now? Or, or what, you know, where can I where can I live? What team can I look at? Because you've got to, like, get everything organized, haven't you? Otherwise, yeah. it's like, you know, you're, you're kind of globe trotting, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. And uh for me, I, I flew over here on an aeroplane. I signed a contract with the guys and, and our manager, Auntie, right now, he said, mate, you can stay with me. And, and you got to remember, I was 23 years old. I've never heard anyone speak a different language before. And I'm by myself and we're going riding, hopping in the van with, with Pepe, my mechanic. And, and, you know, I'm lucky that they can speak English pretty well. 
but it's it's out of your comfort zone. Mm. I tell you, it, it was really hard to just go and order. I just ate spaghetti bolognese just every day of the week because that's all I could read on the menu. <laughs> so, little things like this, and and that's what makes you tough. And I see that with uh, the riders like Ben Townley and Josh Coppins. They're tough, mate. They mm. they've come from the other side of the world, and and when you come here, you don't have a plan of going back you're here to stay and and with that goes with my training i i put in my best and my races i try my best maybe sometimes it looks like i don't or whatever but uh you know i i try my best all the time so if i get eight that's what i had if i get 10th that's what i had so that's uh i think coming from so far that's how the riders approach their racing in, in which case then the podium last week came at a good time you know especially looking towards 2016 and, and later on it's kind of like a listen guys i'm here i can do this yeah that was a big step for me because it's been i've been getting some good starts and it's still like oh there's paul Arn and bob Rashef. and now i'm sort of hey you know what I'll, i i want to keep those guys behind me so uh you know, it's still early. It's still, we're training and, and I need to keep pushing hard and, and we're just going to keep trying our hardest to get in front of these guys. And we're, we're making good steps. We're getting good starts, good bike behind me, good team, and uh, everything's ready to go. All right. Well, we are out of time with you, but uh, before you do go, obviously when you did get hurt last year, you missed a lot of action on the track. You missed racing here, but you did race here at the Motocross of Nations in 2013. Uh, has it changed much? How does it feel? Those memories of that weekend still in your mind? Yeah, definitely. Standing on that start line with the crazy German crowd, that was a really cool thing. So uh, the track is really different at the moment. It's, uh, I think they forecasted a lot of rain and they didn't water so much. So it's very hard pack and uh, it's quite sketchy. It's fast. Mm. So it's going to be interesting uh, when it comes race time, whether it's going to form some lines and stuff. But it's... Uh, Designations was really ripped deep and, and a lot of lines. So it's it's actually quite different to ride this, this year round. All right. Well, look, we are at a time with Todd Waters from Red Bull Ice One Husqvarna Factory Racing. So, uh, Todd, wish you all the best tomorrow, the rest of the season, as always. Thanks for joining us in here today. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Competition time then, folks, and it's a good one. Right. This week's competition comes courtesy of Thor. Now, to win a set of Ryan Villapoto's Thor race gear, all you have to do is answer the following question. The Verge helmet utilizes an extremely comfortable inner liner that wicks moisture and is fully removable and washable. Is the liner A, super cool liner, or is it a silver cool liner? So is the liner a super cool liner or a silver cool liner? You'll also win MXGP the video game and a season's pass to mxgptv.com. Uh, submit your answers on our Facebook page as always. And uh, I do happen to have the shirt from that set of kit right here. So uh, here's the jersey. Turn it that way. There's the jersey there. And also you can see on the back, signed Ryan Villapoto shirt. Obviously not with us at the moment. And uh, no real official word as to as and when he will be back. But uh, we are, though, round 10 in the FIA Motocross World Championship. And David Philippart's team uh, manager, team owner and rider in DP19 Racing Yamaha. Good to see you, David. Uh, welcome you. to Germany. Um, Thank you. It's your second year running the team now. Um, is it easier now in the second year because you have the infrastructure or is it as difficult as it was in the first year? Oh, for sure it's more easy than first year, but uh, this year we have one uh, young rider in the team. Uh, we have worked uh, double in the, in the last year. Yeah, now we have uh, five races without uh, Andrea, but uh, the, the work of managing rider is uh, all the time is not easy, no? because we have to, to check everything. No? And uh, yeah, we, we, have, we have to work for the future, and this is part. And Andrea Zanotti riding in the 125 European Championship. How is that going, you know, the first time having another rider in the team? And how's he doing? Yeah, he's good. I'm very happy for his, him because uh, he's a really young uh, guy. And uh, coming uh, for the first race to the now is uh, all the time in the top 10 uh, to the European champion. And, uh, yeah, for uh, a second rider, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not really difficult even in the, in the race uh, is more difficult uh, at home because uh, Andrea I need to training is a really young rider 
and uh, you have to train it together and uh, and this is the difficult for me but not in the race because you have you have mechanic and uh, everything uh, for good race no a question from uh, one of our twitter followers uh, from mx justin mx hipito as a as an mx teacher how do you recognize talent in a young rider such as uh, zanotti and how old is he by the way how old is he? Uh, he's a 50 now. Okay. So he's how did you how did you recognize him? No, la, yeah, last year Andrea I win the Italy one, uh, 85 champion. He come in the some good race in Europe. Uh, he's finished five uh, in the 85. I think so. He's one. The, in Italy we have uh, two young young rider. His one is Andrea Zanotti. The other one is Gianluca Focchetti. And uh, we we talk a lot uh, with the family for Andrea. And uh, we have uh, he won't come in with the Yamaha because he really small guy and uh, the Yamaha bike is good for start, no? Mm. In the one to five class, and this is a good combination. And when the, when come in my team the first time for try the bike or for for leaving, uh, he's uh, he's good guy, really calm, yeah, really relaxed, no? And uh, I like so much to to training together, to fight uh, some time, because uh, he's, he's a really young guy for the moment. It's, I think so, we, he has uh, one style in the bike, uh, very old, you know, it's no new, no scrub, no... Does, uh, he, does he get this from you? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe. <laughs> but uh, I like because uh, he's, uh, in the race, is very um, de de determined, you know. Yeah. Start the last and push for the last lap. Uh, all the time, the last lap is the best uh, lap time. And this uh, I like for Andrea, no? because he push a lot. If he likes to push, and he's definitely a Philip Hart student, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah. Really. <laughs> Do you enjoy that um, interaction with him, you know, helping him, coaching him at the races? Yeah, I, for sure. Every race I help uh, for the start, for uh, the line, uh, for the bike, uh, what change the suspension, like that. When they have time, no, because <laughs> well, much time I'm I'm the bike and much time is close. The when I finish, I go change uh, the clothing and I go immediately in the start for Andrea. It's not easy when the when it's like that, but uh, I talk a lot with uh, Andrea for uh, the line, uh, the jump, uh, or for sure the start where gate uh, need to to take for a shot. No? Mm. As a um, as a rider, having your own team, how important is it for you to uh, for for results? Is it more important to be top five or to be inside the top ten, for instance? For uh, for Andrea. For you. Ah, for me, yeah. For me, when we start this year, I hope uh, stay in the top uh, seven uh, every race, but uh, it's not easy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not easy. We but we fight for this. We have a lot of race to stay in the top seven, top five, and uh, but this year is we we have a lot of factory rider. I think so, it's twenty yeah. something like that, and uh, I'm the first uh, no factory rider, and this is uh, important for me, you know, because uh, uh, my team is uh, private, but it's uh, possible to stay the same uh, with the factory, you know, and this uh, we focus for for this now for staying more better in the race. I mean, uh, Paul, I know you want to ask about Majora, which was a fantastic weekend for you, David. But if I remember rightly, it's almost 10 years ago at this track where you became, I think it was the second rider to win Grand Prix in MX2 and MX1, now mm. MXGP. Yeah. Um, it's a long time, eh? You've had a long career. How do you kind of feel where it is at the moment? People like yourself, Tyler Rattray, Ken De Dijka, um Stribos, you know, yeah. Stribos, yeah, reaching 29 years old. It's... Uh, you know, is there still a place for you guys? You still feel fast enough to run at the front of this premier c class? Yeah, it's uh, the motocross in my life. I like uh, race all the time. I like uh, to fight with other riders. And uh, yeah, I I know that my career is start to go down to finish, no? Because I'm 32 years now and I'm the, the old rider in the moment. Uh, I started my first GP in 2003, 2004. Now it's more than 11 here, stay there. And uh, but I um, this year we work a lot with the, my my trainer and uh, the, my body is uh, I think so the best body for uh, in the in the world now. 
<laughs> and uh, and just I need uh, some speed in the bike, but uh, I'm uh, I'm same uh, ten years to go or or nine years to go when I win there in Tershental. I'm the same um, spirit, no? And I know I'm now much much better because I'm also my team, no? We have two jobs with manager and with rider. And yeah, I'm no hold. I'm age is good. a number, age is a number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wishes it was 19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Uh, another question from Ryan G. Uh, how difficult is it to run your race team and race at the same time? Yeah, it's not easy because we have to organization everything with the tr truck, uh, the mechanic, uh, and uh, the race. Uh, now we have uh, five races outside. With, without outside to the Europe, and uh, yeah, it's not easy. But uh, you have to the same speak last year. When I put the, my helmet, I'm a rider, no. When I take out the helmet, is is uh, is a manager. <laughs> How special were this weekend? Uh, a week ago, Majora. You don't live so far away from there. Yamaha 60th anniversary, riding yellow uh, Yamahas to celebrate that. It was almost the perfect weekend for you, wasn't it? Yeah, very close uh, to stay in the podium, uh, very close to win the race. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy. I'm very happy for my condition in the race because the the track is so so muddy. We, are, uh, we have a lot of line, and uh, yeah, for me Majora is uh, is messy because uh, when I'm young I see many races there, and uh, now when I go riding there is. Uh, he pass one uh, energy than different race, no? And uh, we have a lot of uh, people to come with me, a lot of sponsors stay together with me for this track, and it's good. For two laps, you led the best <laughs> riders in the world, leading at Majora, leading in Italy, your home race, lots of fans. How was it? Uh, what was the feeling like? Because it's been a long time since you've been yeah. at the front. Yeah, I feel, uh, I feel good. I feel I remember what you have to go, no? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, many many time I go there yeah. in the first position, never a Majora, but uh, we in 2008, 2009, 10, uh, six uh, like that. It's many years still uh, front like that, and uh, yeah, when he's there, I say, oh, well, it's good feeling, no? <laughs> <laughs> and more impressive, well, Yamaha one, two, three. Yeah, you know, you and uh, Roman and uh, Jeremy. Um, Yamaha must have been pretty happy with that result. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Is uh, now is the best bike, uh, the best bike because uh, February riding very fast in the moment. Uh, Jeremy last year he go second, the world champion, and uh, we had me with private team, uh, private bike, and uh, it's possible stay in the in the top uh, with private bike, and it's uh, I think this is m very important for Yamaha. No? Because every people is possible to take the bike and go with MGP, you know. And this is, uh, is the Yamaha is very close with factory team with the the, the bike with the where you buy, you know, in mm. the in the shop. And I think so in Majora with the yellow bike and the first Moto 3 bike is, uh, I think it's amazing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but one more thing. I mean, Majora was a, a great weekend for you. Um, next year, the GP might not be there because of the Motocross of Nations, you know, scheduled for 2016. For you, it'll be another plan to push hard one more year, MXGP, make that Motocross of Nations. That'll be a fantastic event for you, won't it, if you can be in Team Italy? Yeah, maybe it's my last race, no? <laughs> we focus for this. And, uh, yeah, for sure, uh, I try to push very hard for us stay one year more in the MSGP for also for Majora Nation because uh, I think so when uh, when Antonio or Lupino Guarniero me is uh, in the best condition it's possible win the nation in and in Majora we have also Lupino riding five in the first moto mm. is so fast no and uh, Antonio with uh, without uh, with with problem uh, he finish a eight seven and uh, it's possible next year make good good result in the nation but now we focus for finish this year and after we check well finally uh, just one last question um, you came so close to getting a podium last week you could have almost won a race as well has that given you a little bit more belief that actually you yeah. can still make a podium you can still possibly win a race if everything is uh, falling in the right way 
Yeah, DC are the the best is because MHGP is possible win the race. I think so, 15 rider, no? Mm. Uh, just good uh, condition on the, on the day is possible win the the race. Same me one, with one second and one five is possible win. And uh, yeah, in major I just m much mistake in the second moto. It passed me favor like that and uh but i'm very happy because uh his his focus is possible go there and now i think so every rider he push for going the podium no mm. well it was a great weekend yeah. um and i was you know i would have been one of the happiest people for you if you made the podium but you just missed it you know um i think it was strybos wasn't it the last yeah. lap passing max nagel but um Maybe the Motocross of Nations next year will be a, a little yeah. bit different for Or you. maybe some other race this year. Absolutely. <laughs> well, David Philippot, thanks for joining us here Thank from uh, DP19 Race in Yamaha. Well, that's it for our studio show this week, round 10 of the Motocross World Championship here in Germany. Of course, you can catch all the action live tomorrow on MXGPTV.com. And uh, I'm really not sure how it's going to turn out this weekend because obviously Kai Rowley still injured, Nagel on home soil, no to South, Strybos a race winner last week. You know, there's so many riders to pick and choose from. Sean Simpson is getting closer to the podium as well. And uh, don't rule out this guy either. After his performance last week, David Philippartz could, after winning here in the past, could be uh, knocking on the door for a podium himself. Well, that's it. Thanks to Adam. Thanks to David. Uh, thanks to Todd and also to Paul's Jonas. Uh, we'll see you uh, next week uh, or two weeks' time when we go to Sweden. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. Bye for now.